Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Recently, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, approved a new method of stem cell production at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. It's an automated system that's capable of producing billions of stem cells in a short amount of time. Now, it took more than four years to develop the process, and the FDA was there every step of the way. This advanced method will increase the production of clinical-grade stem cells at the Florida campus, and that will establish the Florida campus among the first automated stem cell manufacturing sites in the U.S. Wow. Big deal. And that is a giant leap in the field of regenerative medicine. Regenerative medicine... Regenerative medicine is a game-changing area of medicine with the potential to heal damaged tissues and organs. It has the potential to provide solutions and hope for people who have conditions that today are beyond repair. Stem cells are currently being studied as treatment for a whole host of medical problems. And joining us on phone from Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, to discuss stem cell production is the Associate Director of the Mayo Clinic Center for Regenerative Medicine, Dr. Gujan Bu. Welcome, Dr. Bu, to the program. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah, Dr. Boo, thanks so much. So stem cells and more stem cells, it sounds like. Why Why is this a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because we all know that uh, stem cell can help the body to heal and help to kind of reduce the suffering of many patients, especially complex conditions that we have little current medical treatment. And, um, and the, the, the problem in the past is that you didn't have enough of them. Correct. So if we, we traditionally produce these cells in the uh, laboratory culture setting, grow them on monolayer, you can produce maybe a few million cells, but that's not enough to treat the patient. Now with this automated system, we can produce billions of cells and not only be able to treat patients, but multiple patients at the same time. And what, what will you use them for? Well, it, it, uh, we have several uh, current trials and proposed trials, and these trials are different stages. So some of them are, you know, for example, uh, treat condition after following a lung transplant. Uh, you know, the body has a tendency to reject them. These stem cells can modulate the immune system or calm down the immune system to reduce that tendency. There are several other conditions, including inflammatory bowel disease, um, some of the uh, uh, chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease and so on. So you're talking about stem cells. Are there different kinds of stem cells, or do you give the same kind of stem cells to somebody who has uh, to modulate the inflammatory response uh, the same as you would someone who has inflammatory bowel disease? Well, uh, there are basically two types of stem cells. Stem cells come from the patient themselves. Those are called autologous. So these you can derive from the bone marrow or the uh, fat tissue. The kind we manufacture or develop process to produce are so, so-called allogenic. And these are come from young, healthy donors. And uh, once we manufacture them, they can give it to a different patient. And how did you used to do this? Okay, so we used to uh, culture these uh, these uh, so-called culture flask in the cell uh, cell culture lab, and that's a manual process and labor intensive. It's slow. It's low yield. Uh, now it's an automated machine. And uh, how did you develop? Was this developed at uh, Mayo Clinic Jacksonville? This machine? No, this machine is uh, come from a, a commercial entity. The machine itself is called a quantum machine. But you, uh, how, how is it that you're now able to use it at, at Mayo Clinic Jacksonville? So we uh, have this machine in the setting of what we call the human cell therapy lab. And that lab is headed by Dr. Abba Zubair. Um, and within this uh, facility, which is called the GMP facility, referring to good manufacturing practice facility, in this facility we control the environment uh, control the uh, the sterile conditions and so on. And FDA goes through this process to ensure that the way we manufacture this are uh, making safe products that, uh, that we use to deliver to patients. So you can get the stem cells from a donor, correct? Correct. And then you have a way of multiplying those stem cells. So you get a million stem cells and you can turn it into a billion. Exactly. And uh, who are the donors? So and, these and, and, are anonymous, uh, healthy donor. We have a way of uh, register uh, 
uh, people who are interested, much like uh, how we identify donor for, for blood or for bone marrow uh, when a patient needs transplant. Is it painful to get uh, stem cells from someone? Uh, not really. This is standard um, bone marrow harvesting uh, steps, and uh, the technician are getting so good at this, you, you hardly feel much and, and not much uh, uh, more pain for it or difficult than uh, donating blood. What, what types of diseases or, or conditions most, like, most likely or most often do you use stem cells for? Well, uh, much of these are injury or degenerative conditions. So, for example, one of the trials we uh, are going to get started soon is actually a condition called a hemorrhagic stroke, the stroke, the type of stroke that have bleeding. And these patients suffering not just the stroke damage to neuron, but also the secondary um, sort of events, which are inflammation in your body, which drive more damage. So the stem cell from the preclinical study have shown that that they can neutralize some of these inflammatory responses, therefore reduce the secondary damages. But uh, at this point in time, you're not able to review, re, uh, you're not able to reverse the brain damage that was done by the stroke. Not yet, but that's uh, we have uh, pipelines in the, uh, in particular in the preclinical lab, that we're testing this in the animal, so-called the regeneration or cell replacement replacement therapy. So these cells can potentially use to treat the de- 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 neurodegenerative diseases, for example, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, to replace the lost neurons or other cell types in the brain. Uh, what about the heart? Uh, there's damage to the heart muscle when someone has a heart attack if it's not re- reversed right away, if the blood supply isn't restored right away. Are you anywhere close to being able to use stem cells to regenerate the muscle that was damaged? So that's also in the clinical trial stage. Uh, I think uh, Mayo Clinic uh, uh, Rochester has a trial going on. Several other centers have these trials. They're not ready for clinical application yet, but we're at the translation stage, so to say, meaning that these are going through clinical trial. These cells can be converted to uh, heart muscle cells to replace uh, those damaged cells. So now that you are able to um, bulk up the stem cell production that you can do for these trials, I would imagine that this has to be quite helpful when it comes to those clinical trials that you're working on. It's very helpful. Understanding that for each different type of disease or different trial, we need a separate approval from FDA. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are called IND, investigative, in, investigative New Drug. So those have to go through the approval process. FDA will make sure that these cells deliver for to specific disease condition is safe before they will allow us to test it in patients. All pretty exciting. A new method of stem cell production with uh, potential treatment for multiple medical problems. We've been talking with the Associate Director of the Mayo Clinic Center for Regenerative Medicine, Dr. Gujin Bu. Dr. Bu, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.